Hey guys, so exciting update on the UAP footage from Beaver, Utah. I saw one of the most compelling analysis yet on Reddit, posted by a guy named Rob Woodis. And I want you to go ahead right now and check out Rob's YouTube channel. It's a brand new channel. He created it just so he could post this analysis. It's his very first video. And I'm actually gonna show Rob's video in full today. It doesn't have a voiceover, so I'm gonna try to talk over it a little bit. But the research Rob conducted really speaks for itself. I don't think much more needs to be said. I'm just gonna add this voiceover for a little more context in case you guys wanna listen with the volume on. So Rob's video in no way proves what this object is. However, he does show very well what it isn't. What's really amazing about Rob's research here is that he's able to prove that the object originates really far in the background. It then travels to a significant size in the foreground. And due to the high quality nature of the footage, we have all of these real world frames of reference to see that this thing is flying from far away and it's flying really, really fast. Faster than any bug, faster than any bird, and this video right here is gonna prove it. So let's go ahead and roll tape, and if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, we're gonna be posting more of these. Also, be sure to check out Rob's video on his channel, subscribe to that channel, he's got more videos coming your way too. So this is exactly why we made the decision to post the raw footage of this UAP. We wanted people like Rob to dive into it and use their skills, and we knew that through a crowdsourced investigation, we would get closer to the truth of what this thing is. So Rob was actually able to find this exact location on Google Earth. He shows that as the object appears in the distance from the ridge line, it's actually obscured by the trees, proving that it is indeed originating in the distance. Here it's completely obscured by the tree. Here's where the objects first detected. It's blocked by the tree. Blocked again. It makes a sharp bank on its side, switching from one axis to another, and speeds past camera. Rob then tells us after further review he's confident that this is actually a craft flying at high speeds. Here's why. Notice how the drone flight path causes parallax. The foreground elements increase in size and track away from the destination vanishing point. He shows us what the destination vanishing point is, pointing out that stationary objects in frame will track away from this point at a rate proportionate to their distance from this point and from the camera. Here are the first few frames where the object can be detected. Rob reverses the motion of the object and replays it a couple times. So again, this is going back to the first couple frames where the object's detected, and he shows us that there are actually these reference points. There's the tree in the foreground, this utility tower, mid-range, and then there's the mountain peak itself in the distance. Look at how these tracking points shift in proportion to the distance from the vanishing point in the camera. The background distance of this mountain range is about two and a half miles away, and notice how there's very little movement in this flying object. The flying object has separation from the vanishing point, but it still doesn't track with the foreground or the midfield. In other words, it doesn't obey the parallax tracking.
see in this clip here, the object's barely even visible and it's just simply not tracking with the foreground. The foregrounds track significantly, but the object's only moved a little bit and it continues to have very little detail, which is consistent with it being far away. It then suddenly increases its speed. To make an equally compelling point that this thing couldn't possibly be a bug, Rob Woodis actually shows us a bug from an earlier point in the very same raw footage. Here's an actual bug from earlier in the scene. Did you see it? Again, another reason we wanted to get this raw footage out for you guys to look at. Now notice how this bug looks absolutely nothing like the flying object in question. First of all, it's black, it's flying around erratically, and it's clearly flapping its wings. The UAP, on the other hand, has no wings or any visible means of propulsion. It's white or metallic. It has no markings. It's able to bank on its side, and it seems to fly perfectly straight, if not up a little bit, in a way that a bug or bird could never do without flapping its wings. Where is the wing flap on this UAP? Not once does it appear to flap. Another fact that Rob points out is that the object in question flies much farther than this bug because it starts out smaller and it exits frame much larger. So if they are the same type of object, one has traveled much farther than the other in the same amount of time, meaning it's traveling at a much faster speed. All right, this is easily my favorite part of Rob's analysis. I'm just going to let you watch. So this demonstrates the true beauty of a crowdsourced investigation. Rob takes a few objects. He takes these three trees, this pathway here, and he pulls it up on Google Earth. So he's able to show the exact location of where the drone operators, Sam Shortek and Jimmy Chappie are standing. He's also then able to show where the drone was flying when it encountered the UAP. Using these Google Earth coordinates, Rob's able to show that the object's originating at least 160 feet away, although other estimations show this mountain range being about two and a half to three and a half miles away.
In other words, these are speeds no bug could ever possibly reach. From Rob's analysis, he estimates that this craft was flying 9,000 miles per hour at a minimum. And Parallax proves it. What do you think? Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. Also subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm gonna be posting videos like this about every week going forward. Be sure to also subscribe to Rob Woodis's channel. I'll link that below and we'll see you guys next time.